Hello, nerds. Let's talk about data. I frequently receive data in this format that represents a company's financial performance across multiple locations. And in this format, it's difficult to use. To explore a formula that helps organize this information, I've created some fictional data for a handful of fictional locations selling delectable fried chicken and satisfying refreshments in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Our objective is to write one formula that can pull data by location for each column dynamically. To make this process easy to visualize, I have both the data and formula on one worksheet. This way you can see all of the references required to build this formula on one screen. And I want to quickly point out that by adding a date to location with the concatenate function, you create a unique identifier that then allows you to track whichever column you like by period. This will make a little more sense momentarily. But it's relevant now because I get the data in this format. And then I add a unique identifier on the left-hand side to facilitate organizing the data by location and column category. And then what you'll notice is that what we're doing above is organizing this information so that each location has only one row and that the corresponding column we're tracking has all of the data organized in the appropriate time period. And we can accomplish this with the SUMIF function by using our unique identifier for the range. Then matching it with our criteria, which is a combination of our date lookup and location. And finally, dynamically sum the data in the column that matches our criteria. Now this is where it gets interesting because the most important change to the SUMIF function is the input for sum range. We're using a combination of the index and match functions to dynamically return the column we want, which in this case is the profit column. And the trick is to input a zero for the input row num in the index function. When you do this, Excel returns the entire column. So you see that match is looking for profit in this array. And returning the sixth position. And then index, because we've input a zero for row num, returns the entire column. And I have just this portion of the formula off to the side, should you want to study it independently. With that foundation in place, let's examine what this permits we do with larger data sets. With this formula, we can evaluate each location separately for every column of data provided without writing multiple formulas. On this tab, I've included the ability to quickly change the column reference with a numerical input in the title bar. And otherwise, the formula we just evaluated is used in this entire array. So what we can do now is copy and paste this array six times. And then enter values one through six for each of these separate data sets. And watch how the data changes when we do this. Now you'll see we have all of our data organized into a summary income statement by location at the top. And then by unit sales below which really helps evaluate the data and look for interesting outcomes. For example, why does only one location sell hot sodas? And why would anyone in New Mexico want hot soda? Could be some suspicious activity taking place at Los Pollos Hermanos location, bottom Albuquerque. Now you can achieve similar results with a pivot table, but this permits some flexibility with formatting 
and facilitates using this data directly in financial models and other forms of analysis, which is what we're all about. Okay, that's all. Someone get this information to Hank Schrader.